Live from the Doug Grutchfield Fieldhouse at Fitchburg High School, FATV presents coverage of the Central Mass Pod 6 semifinals. And tonight we bring you the second half of our Fitchburg Lemonster playoff basketball doubleheader. The Red Raiders trying to beat the Blue Devils for the third time this season. It's the two versus the three seed here in Pod 6. Fitchburg, the two seed, the home team, six and three record on the season, lost their first three, then won their next six. Meanwhile, Lemonster, after losing their two games to Fitchburg, able to beat Quabbin on the February the 8th, but lost their last two, 56-44 in Barrie on February 11th, and then they got to play Oakmont for the first and only time, lost 58-42, and were without the services of their best player in Justin Dada. But still, Brian Perez was able to put up 25 against the Spartans and Warren Asias with 13, but that's most of the points right there for the Blue Devils, for the Red Raiders. They crushed Gardner in the one meeting they got against the Wildcats, and then they beat Narragansett 61-52, then 69-50 in the last time out on the 11th six days ago. Jorge Gaetan and Darnell Thomas, each with 14 points. Kenny Marte, Zion Ayala with eight and seven, respectively. Red Raiders got scoring from literally everyone in the lineup, and now they're gonna be looking to continue their winning ways and try to avenge the girls' basketball team's loss to Lemonster. They fell 43-36 in the first half of our doubleheader. Congratulations again to the Lemonster girls' basketball team. On to the finals of Pod 6 to take on either Quabbin or Oakmont, who play as we speak in Barrie, that game in the third quarter. We're going to throw it down now to public address announcer Craig Antossi for the starting lineups and anthem here from the Fieldhouse. It's the Pod 6 semifinals on FATV. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Fitchburg High School and the Doug Grutchfield Fieldhouse for tonight's Pod 6 playoff basketball matchup featuring the visiting Blue Devils from Lemonster High School and our own Fitchburg High School Red Raiders. On behalf of the Fitchburg Public Schools, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank FATV for their continued support of Fitchburg Athletics by offering live coverage of all of our winter matchups broadcasted live into the homes of our Red Raider community, home and abroad. And now for tonight's starting lineups, beginning with the visiting Blue Devils from Lemonster High School. First up, wearing number 22, a freshman, Terrence McCormick. Next up, wearing number 23, a junior, Warren Axius. Wearing number 44 for the blue, a senior, Nico Dalekiai. And the first of two senior captains for the Blue Devils, wearing number 12, Brian Perez. And last but not least, wearing number 25, Isaac Tyson. The Blue Devils are led tonight by head coach Casey Grutchfield. And now, time for the starters for our Red Raiders. Wearing number 12 for the Red Raiders this evening, a junior, Nico Caputi. Wearing number four, a senior, Daniel Snoop Edmonds. Now we have our three senior captains this evening. First up, wearing number 10, Montgomery Graham. Wearing the number zero for the red and gray, Gabriel Rivera. And last but not least, wearing number three, Jorge Gaetan. The Red Raiders are led tonight by head coach James McCall. 
At this time, I would ask everyone to please rise and remove your caps as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Getting ready for action here in game two of our doubleheader between the Fitchburg Red Raiders and Lemonster Blue Devils as Rivalry Week Part 2 continues on here from the Grutchfield Fieldhouse. Red Raiders in the home white uniforms with red numbers going left to right in this first half of play. Blue Devils in the road dark blue uniforms with white numbers and trim going right to left in this first half. And the Blue Devils will start with it with Terrence McCormick. McCormick on the right side, harassed by Jorge Gaetan. We'll leave it off there. As making the moves down low, Warren Asias took an extra step and every Red Raider knew it. The officials agree and so the first possession ends in a turnover for Lemonster. We'll see what the Red Raiders do. Nico Caputi, the lone junior in this starting five for the red and gray. And a travel against the Red Raiders. That's an up and down. The ball not released before his feet got back to the floor. Blue Devils will have another go here, their second possession. So travels on both sides. And here is Brian Perez, went off for 25 on Saturday against Oakmont, the number one seed in pod number six. Now McCormick skips it across Isaac Tyson holds across to the near side McCormick trying to take it to the rack got it up and in the freshman guard Terrence McCormick gets the first points of the game for the Blue Devils the lone freshman in this contest we had one senior in the first game we have one freshman in this game so here's Gabe Rivera in the center circle and closely guarded there by Terrence McCormick now trying to make his way to the rim. Up he goes. He gets contact while airborne to the ground, but he's back up. He's all right, and the foul called. Be against Warren Asias, the junior guard, and two free throws awarded to the senior tri-captain Gabe Rivera. 19 free throws made this season, leads the team. First one is good. First point of the game for the Red Raiders. Rivera, 10.6 points per game, is second on the team behind Jorge Gaetan's 16. Second free throw is good, and we are level at two. Abe Rivera with the first two points of the contest for the red and gray. Justin Dada not in the starting five. We know he missed Saturday's game with an injury. Not sure if he's fit to play tonight. 
I'm not going to go and take wild guesses. I've already been burned by that once this year. Red Raiders force a turnover. Here's Rivera. Caputi right side baseline. Contact made on the shot. Nico Caputi will go to the line. Caputi, as we mentioned, the lone junior in the starting five. Gabe Rivera, Jorge Gaetan, Snoop Edmonds, and Monty Graham, all seniors. It's four of the five seniors on this team. Kenny Marte is the other one. First free throw for Caputi is good. And the Red Raiders will have the lead on that. Caputi with just four free throws made this season. No idea how many he's missed. We're just happy we know how many he's made. Second free throw will rattle, not fall. Pulled in by Tyson. Blue Devils will try to make their way up court. Viola. Oh, that's Delicky Eye, excuse me. Now Tyson draws contact in the paint, and he'll get two shots from the charity stripe. Already a bunch of fouls in the early going of this contest. Seemed like there was a Red Raider wondering, that's a shooting foul? Isaac Tyson, six free throws made this season. Fifth on the team, first free throw, in and out. For the senior center, him and Perez, co-captains. One more free throw for the senior, trying to equalize early with a minute 43 gone. Second one, no. Front rim and Caputi pulling down that rebound and warding off with force. On the other end, Rivera, jumper from the elbow. Nothing there, trying to save it. There was Monty Graham getting around the Blue Devil, trying to throw that back in. Unfortunately, the ball hit the baseline. Just a bit short, long stretch pass. Tried to catch a CS in transition. <laughs> It'll just be a foul. As he's able to stop to see us from making the basket, he'll make him earn it one at a time, but that's already two fouls against Caputi and he'll have to come out. And so an all senior five out there for the Red Raiders as Kenny Marte will check in. Here's a CS, first free throw is good. He's a junior guard. And a CS on the season, 14 free throws made. That ranks first on the squad. Slumminster team makes 8.3 free throws a game. Second free throw does not go, so we are tied at three. Red Raiders quickly move down court. Here's Edmonds on the right side. Bit of space given between him and McCormick. Bounce pass on the right side, looking for Marte. And that's out of his reach. Not touched by a Blue Devil, so Lemonster will have it back. 5.55 to go in the first quarter. 3-3 three, three the score. A field goal and a free throw for Lemonster and three free throws for Fitchburg in the old early going. That ball on the floor and able to keep his feet off the ground to prevent a travel while on his belly was Brian Perez. Smart thinking there. Far side McCormick, eight on the shot clock. Finds Asias. Right side, shot clock winding down to two. Delicky is gonna have to take a three. Don't think he wanted to take the three there. It does not go, but he was fouled. Three free throws to be awarded to the senior. So Nico Delicky at the line. 12 free throws made this year, ranks third on the team. You get to earn all three of those points one at a time. Not going to earn the maximum. He misses the first. Alrighty, Lemonster one for five from the free throw line. Second free throw is good. We have a final out of Oak Mont, as the Spartans have defeated Quabbin by a score of 41 to 32, or something to that nature. <laughs> as they kind of dumped out of the broadcast like five seconds after the final buzzer. Third free throw is good, so two points Delikiai earns at the charity stripe. His first points of the night. 
to bring it to 5-3. So the winner of this game will get Oakmont in a couple days' time. Monty Graham trying to go to the rack, couldn't get it to fall. And then Tyson stepped on the baseline, trying to corral the loose ball. So the Red Raiders will retain, 18 on the shot clock. Gabe Rivera to inbound for Marte. Marte for Rivera, going to the basket, puts that up and in. Two more for Gabe Rivera to get him to four on the night. And it's five to five. That ball knocked out of bounds. Graham from behind swatting it out, all ball made on the contact. Alex Moisson coming into the game. He'll replace Tyson. And away from the ball, an offensive foul charged. Justin Dada into the game as well now for Lemonster. Moisson with no seconds in the game, but he's already picked up a foul. That's the third against Lemonster. These two teams a little chippier on the boys' side. Probably going to be seeing more fouls between them as Monty Graham has his pocket picked by Warren Asias. And now here's Brian Perez near side, Nico Delicchiai. Back off for Perez. Holding at the volleyball attack line. Asias. And now Moisen. 10 on the shot clock. Found Perez open inside the right elbow, no good. Moisen able to pull that down for a fresh 30. And a quick runner to the basket goes for Perez. 7-5, Lemonster in front. 4-10 to go in the first quarter of play. Here's Rivera, and try to take that himself. He gets a runner of his own. And he floats it up and in. He's got six of the seven for the Red Raiders. We are level at seven apiece, halfway through this first quarter of play. An eighth of this game gone. Here is Dada on the right side. We'll leave it off. Stripped there, Delikiai loose the handle on the ball. Well stolen there by Snoop Edmonds. And he's gonna catch, turn around, shoot a three offline, but Kenny Marte comes down with the rebound. Marte on the right side with pressure from Moisen. Leaves it off for Montgomery Graham. Now at the center circle, Edmonds will hold. Edmonds looking to create a little bit of space, finds Graham, thought about a three, doesn't like the matchup there. Makes his way inside the paint, puts that up. No, does not go. Two hops in out, and Dada will come up with it. He'll bring across the midline, left corner for Delikiai. Moving his way to the paint, floats it, no. Second chance tipped up there, no, it does not go either. Hung on the rim, does not go. Long stretch pass, and for two, no! Daniel Edmonds nearly had the two there. It hung on the top of the rim and did not want to fall. Anywhere but through the rim it went. Out of bounds against Fitchburg. Back to the Blue Devils, 2.56 to go in the first quarter. 7-7 seven, seven to score. Here's Dada with the cut past Edmonds. Now passes off for Asias on the left wing. Asias bring it to the center circle. On the right side, closely guarded by Rivera. Bounce pass for Perez. Into the right side for Moisen, back for Perez. Holding on the right wing, 10 on the shot clock. And ticking further down, Dada loses the handle on the ball, gets it back. Strong pressure there from Darnell Thomas. The shot ends up going wild, misses the mark. And here's Thomas on the right side for Fitchburg. These teams move quickly in transition. Snoop Edmonds with a spin move, found space, goes to the rack, counted at one. A thought that comes to my mind, we didn't have a single and one in the girls basketball game. And we get one here with 2.13 to go in the first quarter of play. The official having a word with Snoop Edmonds and James McCall, the second year head coach of the Raiders. Wanted to get some things straightened out there. 
Now Edmonds will go to the line. Chance to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. Puts it off the back iron, but a lane violation will nullify the offensive rebound. Score will stay at nine to seven. So the Blue Devils will bring it up now. Nico Delikiai for Sias on the far side. Now for Alex Moisen. Moisen has Marte on him. Goes to Dodd on the left side. Edmonds will try to guard him, try to stick with him. Move around the screen set by Perez. Lemonster working methodically now. Five on the shot clock. How many times have we seen it run them under 10 seconds? They're going to have to settle for a very long shot. Delikiai had to rush one up from the paint. Did not get that to go. Edmonds. Pulls that one in, the home run pass. Not out of his reach, but he's not able to save it. Try to keep it from going out of bounds. But he ends up throwing it through the sideline and out. So back to the Blue Devils. 90 seconds to go in the first quarter. 9-7 in favor of, of Fitchburg. And contact on the floor. That's against Fitchburg before the shot. Snoop Edmonds called for it. It'll be his first foul. Each team now with four fouls in this first quarter play. And Dotto will have the inbound with a fresh 30. But it's interesting how lemonster has been taking their time. Not on that possession, though. Dotto underneath gets the finish to tie the game. 9-9 nine, nine the score. 75 ticks of the clock in the first quarter. Charging to the basket, kicking it out for Edmonds. Tipped by a Blue Devil hand, but it made its way to Edmonds on the right wing. Now Marte, left side, contested shot. Could not get it cleanly up. Blue Devils come down with it quickly, get it to midcourt. Asias across to the near side for Moisen. Here's Delikiai. Moving to the center circle. Pressure there from Thomas. Right side, three ball is offline, doesn't catch anything. And another stretch pass is too far. Jorge Gaetan can't pull that one in. Delikiai will take a breather for Lemonster. There's 11 players on their roster. They try to use just about all of them. And the Blue Devils bring it across from Dada. Dada, free throw line, spin move, throws it up. But he took an extra step. That's a travel. Thirty-two point two to go in the frame. So 2.2 second difference between game and shot clock. That's not the first time I've said that sentence tonight. Red Raiders will have the inbound, tied at nine. Only Fitchburg thus far has been able to make consecutive field goals. There's a bounce pass inside, a lot of pressure. Fed it off there. Ayala not able to get the finish. And a foul down low. That's Jeffries, excuse me. Official stopping play with 15.6 to go in the frame. Red Raiders will have the ball. Shot clock is off. Darnell Thomas will look to inbound. He finds Gaetan. Gaetan trying to find some space, finds Monty Graham. Graham right side, spins, blows a tire and a travel. Making the spin move and the grip on the sneaker failed him. Friction coefficient succeeded, and down to the floor he goes. They'll call the travel on that. They're going to try to hit that stretch pass for Asias. Will he be able to get the shot off in time? Yes, he will, to make it 11 to 9. And the Red Raiders won't be able to shoot for the buzzer. And the Blue Devils take the lead through one quarter time. 11 to 9 the score on Warren Asias' second and third points of the night.
We've already confirmed that Oakmont was a winner in boys basketball over Quabbin by about nine points. We think it was 41-32. Meanwhile, in girls basketball, Quabbin is well on their way to winning their pod semifinal. They're up 38 to 22 with less than a minute to play. So it looks like Chalk will hold at least in the one four matchups that Oakmont will host the pod six final in boys basketball and Quabbin will host the girls final. And they'll be hosting Lemonster in a couple days time. Lemonster winning the first half of our doubleheader 43 to 36. To put the Blue Devils through. So, looking at the scoring leaders through one quarter of play. Gabe Rivera with six for the Red Raiders, two for Snoop Edmonds, and one for Nico Caputi, who missed most of the first quarter after he picked up two quick fouls. Leminster has two from Brian Perez, two from Terrence McCormick, three for Warren Asias, two for Justin Dada, and two for Nico Delikiai. Thank you for joining us here tonight on FATV for the continuation of Rivalry Week. The Red Raiders trying to get their first win this week against the Blue Devils. As we said, they lost the girls' basketball game. They lost. They had the lead late against the Lemonster hockey team, but Lemonster scored with six seconds left on Monday to snatch the win away and turn it into a 4-4 tie. And those two hockey teams will be back at it tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And we'll have live coverage for you for that. We'll all be getting up nice and early for that one. Blue Devils will start with the ball in the second quarter of play. And Asias ready to inbound. From the midline with Elijah Jeffries on him, 23 on 23 to start. And Nico Delikiai will carry it across midcourt. Delikiai, right side, gets the pass for Perez. Floats it back for Asias in the right corner. Asias finding some room, kicks out Tyson left side. Graham quickly on him. Montgomery Graham sticking right with him, forces the bad pass and it's taken by Daniel Edmonds. On the other end, Jefferies trying to get the backhand layup, well contested by Lemonster, and a clean shot, unsuccessful. Unable to release cleanly is what I should say, as Lemonster quickly makes their way down court. Justin Dada, left side, that ball rejected. Monty Graham coming up and swatting that one into the curtain. Jefferies will head back to the bench. Gabe Rivera back into the contest for the Red Raiders. 7.19 to go in the second quarter. 11 to nine, the Blue Devils in front. As Delikiai with 20 seconds to work with. Asias, now Tyson, kicks to the right side. As Dada will throw it off for Asias. Delikiai, shot clock to 10. Floated up there, that doesn't go. Dada able to save it from going out of bounds and another fresh 30. And they'll make him pay with Perez. Running to the basket, putting that up and in. You can count it. Strong perseverance from Lemonster on that possession. Couple of chances, that saved ball and Perez able to streak down the paint and put that up and in. Perez, as we mentioned, 25 points. His last time out against Oakmont, the best team in the pod. The free throw is missed. And on the other end, a travel will nullify the basket. Blink and you'll miss something. I only saw the travel, I only saw the aftermath. That happens when you take too long to mark it down on your score sheet. Here's Tyson, top of the arc. 
On the left side there for Kevin Viola. Moving it around, right side. Step back, jumper no good for Tyson. Got his own rebound, put that up and in. Count that in one. Consecutive and ones for Lemonster. And they've got an eight nothing run. A minute 40 gone in the second quarter. And it's 15 to nine for Lemonster. Chance to get one more. He will do just that. Tyson missed his first two free throws, didn't miss that one, completes the three point play. And it's 16 to nine, nine in a row for the Blue Devils. See what Fitchburg can do here. Darnell Thomas. Lots of space. Trying to make his way into the paint. Puts it up off the glass, no good. Rebound taken in by Graham. And a foul called. Dada will be rung up for that. Shooting foul against Lemonster. That's their fifth foul of the frame. And Graham misses the first free throw. The Red Raiders 6 and 0 this season in games that Montgomery Graham has played in. He missed the first three contests. He's played the last six. The Raiders have won the last six. Graham misses both free throws. Only six made this season for the senior. Keeps the Raiders at nine. Blue Devils have been earning and one opportunities, and they drew another one. Didn't get the basket to go this time, but two more free throws awarded to the Blue Devils. And it's Dada at the line. Sophomore guard, Justin Dada Jr. Justin Dada Sr., an assistant coach for this Blue Devil side. First free throw is good. And it's now double digits in a row for Lemonster. And for the Red Raiders, Greg Graham, father of Montgomery, just named the head football coach interim for this upcoming wedge season. Second free throw, good for Dada as well. He's up to four. And it's 11 in a row for Lemonster. They lead 18 to nine, doubling up the Red Raiders, looking for their first points of this second quarter. Couple chances missed there. Another offensive rebound, this one for Graham. Edmonds on the left wing, thought about the three. Dada contesting it, bring it out. Three ball does not fall for Graham. He's able to get the rebound after it's dished out to him. Edmonds will try the three. That doesn't go either. No threes yet for the Red Raiders in this contest. That can't be helping matters. Blue Devils don't have any either. These two teams averaging about the same number of threes made a game, about six. Their numbers over the course of the season, very identical. Delikiai can't get a clean shot off, and we have a timeout called by James McCall with 4.55 to go in the second quarter. 18 for Lemonster, nine for Fitchburg. Go over the scorers for Lemonster. Brian Perez with four, Terrence McCormick two, Warren Asias three, Isaac Tyson three, Justin Dada four, Nico Delikiai two, the Red Raiders Gabe Rivera six, Daniel Edmonds two, Nico Caputi one. The Red Raiders in a scoring funk right now have not scored since late in the first quarter. Probably about five or six minutes since their last points. It was 9-7 at one point in favor of the Red Raiders. But 11 points in a row for Lemonster has given them a nine-point lead, doubling up the Red Raiders. Winner of this game goes to the Ashburnham Westminster line in a couple days' time for the Pod 6 championship to take on top-seeded Oakmont. Because of circumstances that occurred throughout the season, Lemonster and Oakmont only able to play each other once. 
and that was just this past Saturday. That was a game that Lemonster fell by a score of 58 to 42. Fitchburg played Oakmont twice, both at the very beginning of the season. In one game, both games without Monty Graham, in one game without Jorge Gaetan. Red Raiders just able to get it across the line in the 10 second deadline. And Edmonds to the rack, no. Caputi rejected by Moisen. But right out to the right side, three ball, no good. Caputi got that one. That doesn't go either. Nothing going in that rim for Fitchburg. Delikiai with two. All those second chances, and they're not able to come up with anything. Delikiai up to four now, 20 to nine. Lemonster in front. And that basket unkind on the right end. Another one won't go. And now Asias quickly moving his way. Got that to fall. Everything coming up. Roses on the other end for Lemonster. Five for Asias. 22 to nine. The Blue Devils lead. 15 in a row. Graham thought about the three. Now taking it inside. That will not go either. Out to Caputi on the right side. Another offensive rebound. Can they do anything with it? That shot doesn't go either. Third chance, no, still tipping for it. Fitchburg comes up with it. Graham draws contact. Getting shades of that girls basketball game on January 28th, where Lemonster took unlimited shot attempts at that right basket, and none of them fell. It's happening again, but now to Fitchburg. That rim sure hates people. And as you can see, it does not discriminate. First free throw, no good for Graham. And I remember when Fitchburg played Quabbin earlier this year, they had a huge scoring funk in the second quarter, and it was that rim too that the Red Raiders could not find success until the final minute of that frame. Second free throw goes, and so finally the Red Raiders have a point in this frame to get them into double figures, they trail by 12. 200 seconds to go in the first half. Jumper right side, no, but three Blue Devils down low. And a foul against Caputi, and that's his third. Not pleased with the call. Not much he can do about it. It's the ninth foul against Lemon, it's the ninth foul against Fitchburg. Foodie will have to go back to the bench. Can't risk keeping him in with three at this juncture of the game. It is a one and one for Ward Asias. He's one of two at the line tonight. Won't get that one, but there's an offensive rebound. That was huge for Lemonster in the girls game. Perez came up with it. And jumper from inside the paint does not go. Red Raiders trying to quickly make their way. And the finish there for Rivera. Gets him to eight on the night. So the Raiders with three in a row after Lemonster racked off 15, the deficit 10. Fitchburg on nine fouls. Any foul on this trip will be two for Lemonster. Perez floated it up, didn't get it to go. Raiders will let it go out of bounds. They knew they didn't touch it. And we're going to have a timeout. 2.32 to go in the first half. Fitchburg 12, Lemonster 22. It's hard to say any lead is truly safe when these two teams are playing. In fact, we'd mentioned this during the girls game. We'll mention it again. The last time these two teams met, Fitchburg trailed 29-26 at halftime on January the 28th, but a 16-7 third quarter gave them a nine-point lead, 45-36. to And then the Red Raiders were able to push it up to a margin of 52-38. to They kept that momentum going into the early part 
of the fourth quarter. Five and a half minutes remained. Lemonster trailed by 14. Then they went on a 14-4 run. They cut it to two. They had last shot, a chance to tie, a chance to win. They were not able to come up with the game-winning or game-tying basket. And Fitchburg was able to escape that game with the victory. But these teams can go on big runs. And Fitchburg's not going to go 0 for forever on that right side. Maybe for that much longer, well, they're only going to have two and a half more minutes that they'll even be shooting at that side of the court. If the rim to our left is way friendlier to people, Fitchburg should have the advantage in the second half. There are teams who feel that superstitiously one rim, one side is better than the other, and thus they set up on that side of the court because that's the side of the court they will have in the second half. Gaetan, bounce pass inside. Ball knocked out of the hands and illegally. Kenny Marte is fouled. It'll be a shooting foul and Marte with two from the charity stripe. Power forward, his first free throw, back iron, too strong. Marte has made eight free throws this season. That's fourth on the team. 5.2 points per game he averages as well. The lane populated for his second free throw. Raiders trying to cut the deficit down to single digits. The second free throw is good. Marte is on the board. 22-13, Lemonster in front. Two minutes to go in the first half. As Asias with Gaetan on him. Here's Moisen for three, well offline. But it goes right into the hands of one of the Blue Devils there, Michael Halstead. Here's Dada, spin move into the paint. Lost the handle on it and rejected by Montgomery Graham. Out of bounds it goes with Graham's block being the last touch. The Blue Devils will retain with 22 to shoot. Gaetan trying to create a little bit of work for Asias. Ultimately got the inbound to Delakiai. Now Asias back for Alex Moisen. Top of the arc to the left side for Dada. Dada makes his way around the arc, floats it to the right. For Delikiai making his way to the left. That pass intercepted by Gabe Rivera. Pass for Gaetan out of his reach for a moment. Able to corral it. Throw up a three from the left corner and sink it. That's the first time I think Gaetan's taken a shot tonight. And he hits Pater in desperation from the left corner to cut the deficit to six. Here's Halstead now to the right side. Moisen trying to answer with a three of his own. In and out it goes. Edmonds with the rebound. Here is Rivera on the right side, on the wing. Moving to the top of the arc, but he double dribbled it. James McCall not pleased with the call. And now we'll have substitutions. Perez back in for Halstead on the Lemonster side. 53.3 to go in the first half, 22 for the Blue Devils, 16 for the Red Raiders. Don't look now, Fitchburg's put up seven in a row. They still have 16 plus minutes to cut further into this deficit. A lot of basketball to play. Here's Perez on the left side. Now, Asias. Roll switching there, Asias takes it all the way, gets the two. Asias now up to seven, and that intercepted, taken away. Dada coming away with it. And a foul. Foul's going to go against Rivera. It's foul number 10 against the Red Raiders. So everyone has to vacate the paint. For this first free throw, the shooter only. Old habits die hard for one of these teams. For the last time, hopefully they'll have to retain that habit. First free throw does not go for Dada. A 
One more free throw for the sophomore guard. Will rattle out. And Marte able to win the ball. Stretch pass, Edmonds steps back, thought about the three, Dotto was there, thought better of it. Rivera, left side, puts it up with a scoop, he gets it. 10 points now for Gabe Rivera. Three seconds left, Dada is not gonna be able to get a shot off in time. Rivera with a swat out of his hands to bring an end to this first half of play. A 15-0 run for Lemonster, ending the first quarter into the second, building their lead up as high as 13, but the Red Raiders responding with a 9-2 run to cut the deficit down to just eight. 24-18 at halftime. Look over the first half scores. Gabe Rivera leads the Raiders with 10. Jorge Gaetan with three. Has not been able to find much in terms of open looks tonight. Gaetan who leads all of Central Mass in threes per game. He makes four threes a game. He's only made one. I think he's only attempted one. Great on Lemonster to mark him closely. Two for Daniel Edmonds, one for Montgomery Graham, one for Nico Caputi, and one for Kenny Marte. The Raiders, five free throws made, six free throws missed. As for Lemonster, got four from Brian Perez. They have two from Terrence McCormick, seven for Warren Asias, three for Isaac Tyson, four for Justin Dada, and four for Nico Delikiai. Well distributed scoring there for Lemonster. But for Fitchburg, it's Rivera mostly with more than half of the points in this contest. As we mentioned, the winner of this game will get Oakmont in the final of pod six. We already have the other final set in pod six. The one in three seeds, Quabbin and Lemonster will play each other in a few days time. Originally scheduled for Thursday, thinking it might be pushed into Friday, but then there's weather, so they'll probably play Saturday. They'll figure it out. So we know we're going to have bad weather coming late Thursday into Friday. Probably not going to have much in terms of athletic events on Friday. I know boys ice hockey, Fitchburg, Monty Tech, looking to play Grand Dunstable on Friday, but the snow will probably push that into Saturday or Sunday whenever they can get that game in. But we do know that Fitchburg Body Tech will be playing Lemonster tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Get up bright and early for that one. And we'll be there. We've had every ice hockey broadcast. We thank our wonderful FATV crew for making all of this possible. Tonight, Matt Murdaka and Travis Falk on camera and Nate Glennie back in the control room. Also great to see Todd and Kate Robbins here calling this game for RFM. They've got the Lemonster side of things here as we've got the Fitchburg side of things. Also happy to provide our video to them to help make their broadcast all the more better. So for everybody here, basically doing the coverage for both sides except me. Well, I provided them some stat sheets, but other than that, We've all contributed, all try to make that broadcast better as well. Help our friends over there. Three ball for Gaetan does not go. Marte able to get it. Tries to get that up. Force a tie up. Yes, he did. Blue Devils will have the ball, but the Raiders will take the arrow. Fitchburg started with the basketball, so they had the arrow at the start, so that, that Lemonster must have had the arrow there since that's the only possession we've had. So they didn't get the arrow switched over quickly enough, but everybody knew what was up. 
So Leominster leads by six. We start this third quarter of play. And the Blue Devils from Justin Dada moving it around. Right side finds Tyson, three ball, no. But Perez able to get the offensive rebound. Dada with the putback doesn't go either. Third chance is not gonna go either. Thought for sure they'd get that one, but they've got a fourth chance now. Tremendous luck for Lemonster. Perez, left side of the baseline, waiting out everybody, no, fifth chance. Unprecedented, you never see that. Asias on the left side. Tyson lost the handle on it, trying to keep control of it. Ball's on the floor. That's a travel as his feet left the floor and returned to it. Even while he was on his backside, you still can't do that. Red Raiders, nine in the first, nine in the second for 18. Blue Devils, 11 in the first, 13 in the second for 24. Red Raiders did close that first half out with a nine to two run. The deficit standing at six with 90 seconds gone in the third quarter. 24-18 in favor of Lemonster. Squaring up, trying the three there, just a bit too strong from Edmonds from NBA range essentially. How much power you put into the shot if you try to go that strong and you still overshoot. But he had the opening, it was a good look. Here's Perez getting to the elbow, putting that up, and now Lemonster is getting to experience the pitfalls of that end. We'll see what they're gonna call down there. Felt like we got mixed signals. But I believe they ruled that Marte came down with the basketball, but his foot was on the baseline. And there was no foul, or what have we now? I thought I had it interpreted, and just as soon as I thought I had it, no, I did not have it. It's going to be Fitchburg ball underneath the basket. All right, then. No foul on that. But Fitchburg will gladly take the basketball. Daniel Edmonds bringing it across to the near side, Montgomery Graham, now for Gabriel Rivera at the center circle. Red Raiders gonna work methodically on this trip. Rivera, three on the shot clock, Graham lost the handle, and he steps out of bounds trying to corral the basketball. No scoring yet in this third quarter. Lemonster with only one field goal in their last several minutes. Left side, Dada trying to take it. No, again. And there's that home run pass. Guy Todd will surely have that. And there's the first points of the second half. Jorge Guy Todd up to five. And the deficit's just four. Three ball, left side is not going to go either. Perez. And the foul is going to be called there. And they'll call the shooting foul there on Kenny Marte. Here's Brian Perez at the charity stripe. Missed his only free throw opportunity. Makes the first. We'll see Sam Faulkner for the first time. He's played every game this season. One more free throw for Perez. Back iron, but an offensive rebound. Taken in by Asias. If you're gonna miss, miss strong because you've got the two offensive players set up higher, closer to the shooter. And when you're all eligible for the basketball like that, you're outnumbering the other side. Dada, jumper, no, Faulkner pulls it down, gets the pass for Graham, contact, play on, they'll say. And underneath, getting the two there, is Edmonds. And we'll get a timeout with 4.33 to go. 
in the third quarter. The lead is now down to three for Lemonster, 25 to 22. Looking over things here, the Raiders continuing to cut into this deficit, not trying to rush things, just trying to make their way, get strong play defensively where they really need it right now and try to earn points as they can. Mentioned the Raiders opened this season on a 23 game losing streak, lost their first three games to Oakmont and Quabbin. Two against Oakmont, one against Quabbin, but on January 21st, they snapped that losing streak at 26 games. With authority, a 61-44 win included an impressive fourth quarter to put the Panthers away. And since then, six wins in a row for the Red Raiders. And to think of the 26 games they lost, 10 of them were by eight or less. Five of them were by one possession, two by just a point. I joked last year that this Fitchburg team was the best 0-20 team you'll ever see. And this year, they've been able to put it all together in this pod to get themselves the number two seed at six and three. Delikiai floats that up, and a grab. They ruled Perez had been held. The foul there against Thomas. And a fresh 30 for Lemonster to work with. Blue Devils looking for their first field goal of this second half. Not gonna get it on that, it goes in, but it will not be given. That Blue Devil helped back up to his feet. So first off, A non-shooting foul. James McCall had questions about that. And the players now jostling with each other. The officials trying to keep control of this contest. They don't want to hand out any technicals unless they absolutely have to. Lemonster will have the ball with 4.13 to go in the third quarter, up by three, 25-22. Still in search of their first field goal of this third quarter. Delkiai, strong defense by Gaetan. Now long three left side is short. Faulkner pulls it down on the shot from his opposing 33. Quick transition, Gaetan can't corral that pass. And then you see Nico Delkiai holding his feet there so that Kaitan can't get around him and save that ball from going out. Delikia will bring it up the middle with 3.50 to go in the third quarter. Winner of this game gets Oakmont in a couple days time in the pod six final. Turn around jumper, that will rattle home. Warner Sias with the two. And then lots of stuff happening there. Ball out of bounds. Last off the Blue Devils. Darnell Thomas will bring it across center. Leaves from Montgomery Graham. Graham lost a handle on the dribble, but kept it going. Now Gaetan moving it around. Jumper right elbow, partially contested and tipped out to Asias who loses a handle on it. Red Raiders able to steal it right back. 27-22, down low, a two will go from the right side for Darnell Thomas, his first points of the game. 27-24, Lemonster still in front. And they've led for most of this contest. Raiders led at 9-7, haven't led since. That ball knocked out of bounds. Montgomery Graham knocking it out of the hands. Reading the shot from coming off. 11 on the shot clock for Lemonster to work with. 
Coaching staff making it clear to their side, 11 seconds to work with. Dada calling out a play, a few to work with, and a storm to the basket through contact. Foul number four against Fitchburg in this second half. And two free throws awarded to Dada. Try to stretch the lead back up to five. Dada two of four at the line tonight. First free throw is good. Five for the sophomore. Dada the leading scorer on the team this season. The only one over 100 points, 101. Coming into tonight, has the second there as well. So the lead is in fact back up to five. 29-24 for Lemonster, 2.32 to go in the third quarter. Gaetan left side, puts it up, does not get that to fall. Isaac Tyson with the rebound. And stretching it for Asias, Delikiai. Perez gonna try the triple. He's gonna get the triple. Eight points on the night for the co-captain. 32 to 24, five quick ones for Lemonster. Two taken back by Darnell Thomas to bring the deficit back down to six where it started in this half. 32-26. Each team with eight points in the frame. Here's Asias, left side. Delikiai leaves off for Perez, and now Dada. Going back to the methodical play. Running several seconds off the shot clock, down to two. Going to try a three, left wing, no good. But an offensive rebound pulled in by Tyson. Thomas able to knock it out of his hands and just swat it out of bounds. Force the Blue Devils to inbound again. With 123 to go in the third. Perez will find Dada. Tyson able to corral it. A bump there, a play on. Gaetan can't corral that one. Stolen there by Graham. Stretch pass for Edmonds. Asias trying to contest. Play on there as well. Edmonds will get the finish and cut it back down to four. 32-28, Lemonster in front, 60 seconds to go in the third quarter. Perez, now for Delikiai, step back, jumper, rattles home. Six for Nico Delikiai, 34-28. And on the other end, that one will not bounce kindly for Thomas. And the Blue Devils will make their way up. L lost it right there. But they're going to say he slipped and fell due to contact made by Darnell Thomas. He doesn't believe he touched him. But the officials say otherwise. All five fouls in this third quarter against Fitchburg could lead to trouble in the fourth. Lemonster's played clean in the first eight of this second half. About three seconds between game and shot clock. And again, Lemonster more than content to roll the clock down. As Delikiai gets that to go from the right side of the paint. Now eight for Delikiai, 36. And now Darnell Thomas on the ground as he landed awkwardly, contact against Lemonster. The first foul against Lemonster in this third quarter, literally painful. And that was Gabe Rivera, excuse me, on that. Rivera with 10 points in this contest. And now he'll come off the court. He'll take a breather. And we'll see if we'll see him again. He was fouled, so somebody's got to take those free throws. It's going to be Gaetan. 
Gaetan with 10 free throws made this season. First one is good. Gaetan to a half dozen. They make the second free throw. They'll bring the deficit back to where we started this quarter. And that's indeed what will happen. Second free throw, good. 36 to 30. Six points, the gap, as it was at halftime. Will it be the same at three-quarter time? Dada trying to get one more shot off. It's offline to the left. Thomas corrals the loose ball, can't get a chance to put it up. And we'll go to three-quarter time. The score 36-30. Lemonster retains their lead of six points. Easy math there, 12-12. It's the best quarter for Fitchburg. Had nine in each of the first two. Lemons start 11, 13, and 12, so they're right on pace in a sense. But the Red Raiders trying to cut ever further into the deficit. They were able to get it down as little as three, but no further than that. The girls tried to come from behind, down double digits themselves. But they could only get as close as two before the Blue Devils able to pull away in the end game. And as we mentioned, five fouls for Fitchburg, only one for Lemonster. Looking at the scores, Rivera still on 10. Gaetan on seven, Edmonds on six, Thomas on four. Graham, Caputi, and Marte each on the one that they earned in the first half. Four, Lemonster, Perez on eight, McCormick still on two, Asias on nine, Tyson on three, Dada on six, and Delikiai, two field goals made, getting him to eight. Team's entitled to two and a half minutes. Both of them ready to play well before that. They want to get back to playing basketball as Nico Caputi held out from most of the third quarter. And here is Rivera. He's okay. And he's fouled immediately. Going to the basket four seconds into the frame. Now he'll get to shoot the free throws that he wanted to take at the end of the third. That Gaetan deputized for him and sunk. First one goes home with a bit of drama. And one more for the senior tri-captain with the lane populated. Second free throw, in and out it goes. And Moisen is pushed, they'll say. And that's the last foul to give for Fitchburg. So all non-offensive fouls for Fitchburg will lead to free throws for Lemonster the rest of the way. Delikiai brings it across the midline for Perez. Holds there. Finds Moisen. Now for Dada on the left side. Brings it to Perez at the top of the arc. And again, Lemonster using that methodical, time-wasting 25-second possession, driving inside and drawing contact. Fitchburg would like a charge called eventually. I don't think we've had a charge called all night in either side. James McCall letting Nico Caputi know that but he didn't think there was anything wrong with that play. First free throw is good for Dada. Bring it back to a six point lead. And Caputi will have to go back to the bench. The trouble just seems to come to him on his fourth foul. Second free throw is good for Dada as well. He's earned six at the charity stripe tonight. And the lead is seven, 38 to 31. On the right side, Montgomery Graham, leaving for Edmonds. Edmond trying to split the defense. 
and contact before he got the shot off. Uh, we have a third foul against Brian Perez. That's a foul that, considering the result of the basket, the Blue Devils have no trouble, have no issues conceding. The substitution that they wanted to make, they wanted to bring Halstead back in. They said he was coming to the table too late. Not going to let that happen. Here is Rivera on the near side. Rivera's gonna try to find some space, create some space, drives the left side of the baseline, gets that to go, now on 13. 38-33 the score, Levenster still leading. They've led since late in the first. Here's a CS for Dada. Dada holding, passes out on the left side for Nico Delicchiai. Justin Dada, right side of the paint, lost the handle on the basketball, just barely staying in bounds was Lemonster. Shot clock down to two, a CS took far too many steps. They had the whistle blowing before he even let go of the ball. And a timeout going to be called here with 6.27 to go. 33 for the Red Raiders, 38 for the Blue Devils. The pod six semifinals here in Central Mass. Looking over how these teams ended up finishing the pod. Oakmont win 8-0, Fitchburg 6-3, Quabbin 6-4, Lemonster 5-4. The seeds were set before Quabbin was able to get their final game in against Gardner. So thus, Lemonster was given the three seed, even though Quabbin ended up with the better record. It's that game in hand as well. Narragansett and Gardner each finished one and eight. Their only wins coming against each other. <laughs> Ultimately, the Blue Devils only able to play Oakmont once. Ner Lemonster and Narragansett only got to, let's see, Lemonster and Narragansett both only played Oakmont once. Fitchburg only got to play Gardner once. And I mentioned these two teams have pretty similar offensive stats. They each made 209 field goals this season. 55 threes for Fitchburg, 54 for Lemonster, and 76 free throws made for Fitchburg, 75 for Lemonster. Pretty similar stats, only two points separating them. 549 for Fitchburg, 547 for Lemonster. Fitchburg played the slightly tougher schedule. So here's Marte trying to draw contact, he's done so. And he'll go to the free throw line with a chance to bring it to a one possession game again. The Red Raiders have cut the deficit to as much as three, as little as three. The Red Raiders led 9-7 in the first quarter, but then a 15-0 run for Lemonster. Gave them a pretty large lead of 22-9, and Fitzburg's been chasing them ever since. First free throw is no good for Marte. Seven free throws made for the Red Raiders tonight, and that's eight misses. Try to get them to 50% on this one. He's not gonna be able to do so. He misses both. A reprieve for Lemonster. They still lead by five with six minutes to play. Warren Asias next to the center circle on the right side for Moisen on the left. Now Delikiai hopping and catching the ball. Bring it down, top of the paint, left side. Dada thinking about a three, thinks better of it. Delikiai, top of the arc, three ball is short, but Lemonster's got the prime position for the rebound. And they juggle the ball and lose it out of bounds. Is how they initially called it. The other official thinking about it and ultimately disagreeing. The one with the better sight says it's still Lemonster basketball. That seemed to be the case to me as well. And so now we'll see how much time the Blue Devils want to take off the clock here. And Fitchburg also has to be careful. Any blocking foul will lead to free throws. Nothing going there. Try to draw contact. They call a tie up instead. They said it was all clean. And they said they both had the ball. And Lemonster has the arrow. 
After all, Fitchburg started with the ball in the fourth quarter on the arrow. No tie up since. So back to the Blue Devils. Lemonster making him wait so long to get the ball. Dada can't get that to go. The finger roll unkind. They steal it away. Delikiai floater in and out. And battling for it, Fitchburg's got it. Marte will distribute it out to the far side. Now brought in Edmonds, backhand layup, no! Could not get the finish on that. Well contested down low by Lemonster. The teardrop, in it goes! To bring the lead to seven, Delikiai got that one. To bring him to 10, Gaetan, step back jumper, needs that three to go, does not get it to go. But underneath it, it's Rivera who gets the rebound and the putback. 40 to 35, 420 to go in the contest. Here's Moisen. Leaves for Delikiai. Raiders desperately looking for a stop here. Moisen open for three, he sinks it! His first points of the game, and they come up huge to extend the lead to eight. 43 to 35 for Levenster. Montgomery Graham trying to draw contact as he made his way. No contact given, but he got the basket anyway. Ball got away from the baseline, so they'll stop play to retrieve. And a couple substitutions coming in on the stoppage. I've said before, Fitchburg's had so much time to work with, but they're now running out of time. Less than four to go. They trail by six. It seems to be where the deficit keeps coming back to. It grows, it shrinks, but it keeps returning to six. Nico Delikiai now 12 points in this contest. He gets another shot. Three ball is long. Edmonds comes down with it, brings it to the right corner. Like to try a three of his own, but Dada guarding him too closely. Many Blue Devils now standing up with a defense chant. 15 on the shot clock. Rivera on the right side, waiting for something to open. Now trying to take this chance. Nice pass down low. And the finish there by Graham. Now it's back to six again. 45-39. And once again, the Raiders desperately need a stop. Here's Asias on the left. Now for Moisen, steps back, 10 on the shot clock as he distributes. On the left side to Dada, trying to take it all away, he got it. Justin Dada with his second field goal of the night. Nearly a steal for Lemonster. Raiders long stretch pass, and the bounce unkind. Couldn't get the finish, ball on the floor. Raiders get it back. And James McCall will call time with 2.24 to go. The Raiders trail by eight, 47 to 39. Going deep into crunch time here at the Grutchfield Fieldhouse in this 2-3 matchup. The winner plays Oakmont in a couple days time in the pod six final. The Red Raiders boys basketball team in a playoff game for the first time in six years. 2015 was the last time they were there. They lost in the Division I quarters to St. John's of Shrewsbury. Coincidentally enough, Lemonster, when they made the playoffs last year, they beat Shrewsbury in the quarterfinals of Central 1, but then they lost in the semis to that very same St. John's of Shrewsbury. But today, Fitchburg and Lemonster draw each other in the pod semifinals. Fitchburg won both meetings in the regular season, but they always say it's hard to beat a team three times in one season. And the Blue Devils continue to hang and continue to lead. The Raiders looking to bring it back to six or even closer. Rivera, Gaetan, Try to get that bounce pass, put it off the planted foot of Asias. He comes up with the steal. 
keeps that one away. Distributed out to the left side, and Leminster knows that's more advantageous to kill time here. They don't need to take a shot. Pittsburgh will try to make it tough on them. And as the ball comes over there, Monty Graham called for his third. That's the eighth foul. It's a one and one for Warren Asias. Asias is one for three at the charity stripe tonight. And the Raiders absolutely must be ready for a miss. There is the miss. And once again, Leminster comes up with an offensive rebound. In the girls' basketball game, those were significant moments that helped Leminster get the victory. It's happening here on the boys' side as well. Even if the miss is there, the offensive rebound, and there's too much space there for Justin Dada. He gets the finish on that, brings him to 12 points, and now it's a double-digit lead. These teams have traded baskets the entire quarter until now. A timeout with 122 left. But the game's slipping away from Fitchburg. They trail by 10, 49 to 39. Points traded throughout the entirety of this fourth quarter until Dada was able to come up with that. Leminster has been taking advantage of wearing down the Raider defense. And they've come up with so much success in this fourth quarter. So 82 seconds left in this game, 10 point lead for Lemonster. It's going to be a tremendous challenge for the Raiders. They're gonna try their darndest. One thing that can't be helping them too much is they probably only have one timeout left. I think they've taken four in this game. That's what it feels like. I've lost the habit of keeping track of timeouts this season just because it's not always immediate obvious if they're taking a timeout because it's a time for a mask break or if they're taking a timeout because someone's actually called for it. But now Fitchburg needs points and quickly. Caputi down low, got the two. It's Caputi's first field goal. The Knight gets him to three, 41. And, and we have a foul. And they ruled fouls against both sides. A double foul. Personal fouls against both teams. I'd like to tell you the last time I've ever seen that call, but I honestly don't know. I've seen double techs. I've never seen both teams charged with a personal foul on the same run of play. But Lemonster will happily take it. They've got the ball up by eight, 49-41. Dada just trying to keep his dribble going. Asias with the dagger, too strong. And Caputi comes up with the rebound, throws it down court. Rivera, again, needs to find points. Graham trying to go underneath, got that to go with 30 seconds. Blue Devils can take their time. Raiders need to force a turnover. They have forced a turnover. And the timeout called with 24.4 seconds left. It is a two possession game. 49-43. Both these teams like shooting threes. They've had quite a few this year, each team averaging six a game. Between these two teams, we've had three. One triple for the Red Raiders, two for the Blue Devils. Brian Perez and Alex Moisen sinking for the blue and white and for the red and gray, Jorge Gaetan, who averages four threes a game by himself this season, has only been able to take a couple attempts. The Blue Devils have done so well in guarding him and preventing him from getting open looks. 
He has the only three of the night. But we've also seen the Raiders trying a lot in this contest to just drive inside the paint, try to draw contact, try to get baskets up close. They've had some success with it. And now they really do need two threes. That one immediately knocked out of bounds. Asias was able to get his hand on it, put it straight out of bounds into the timekeeper's table. Another five seconds for Fitchburg to inbound. They get the inbound, they found Gaetan, they found their man, they got the shot! To bring it to 49-46, the Raiders have to immediately foul. They'll do just that. 16.8 seconds left. They got the result they needed. Gaetan to 10. And now Nico Delikiai, two of three at the charity stripe tonight on what will be the last and one of the night for Lemonster. Actually, no, they've cleared the lane. They say the scoreboard's wrong. He makes the first one. To make it 50 to 46. So one more free throw for Delikiai. Got that as well. Raiders have to make their way quickly. And going for a two. And an offensive foul called against Fitchburg will almost certainly ice it. Let's see. They also said Monty Graham's on five. And the Raiders have forced a turnover. Now a question is, was Monty Graham on five and they let him continue? Now the scoreboard, the scoreboard operator who's put the fouls up, it says Graham's on five, but the books are on the opposite side of the court. It's just the way it's set up there for distancing and the like. Now the officials double checking the books to see. And now the teams will come to the benches. Now we just saw earlier, although it didn't matter in the end, Nico Delicchi, I got two free throws even though the scoreboard indicated only nine fouls against Fitchburg and what was obviously not a shooting foul. And normally in a basketball game, when, an, when a player's on five, often the scorer's table will have the timekeeper sound the horn to indicate that it's five fouls and they must come out of the game. But again, they're on the other side. No idea if they were ever able to really communicate it or if they noticed it in time. But ultimately, we'll see what we have here. But 8.9 seconds left, it's going to be, it was going to be Fitchburg ball after they forced the turnover. But will they be allowing Fitchburg to retain the ball because it was Monty Graham who forced the turnover? Who by all means should have been disqualified. We see Graham is on the bench. The officials now talking to Kevin Grutchfield and seeing how they're going to call that. So they'll have the Raiders have the ball. They'll come over to the near side. They may ask the timekeeper to change the time to something else. They're gonna put it to 11.9. and they'll let the Raiders retain the basketball. I would say they must get a three. Gaetan's gonna get one up, it's gonna be short. And Dada is fouled with 7.2 left.
Down to the wire it goes, but it looks like Lemonster's done what they've needed. Two free throws for Justin Dada. As it's looking like the Blue Devils are going to come away with a sweep here at the field house to send both of their teams into the pod six final, barring something tremendously spectacular. First free throw for Dada is good. And that's been something big as well for the Blue Devils is they've really, really, they've done so well sinking free throws in this second half. I've got them eight for nine, now make it nine for 10. Dada's got six by himself. Rivera, one last go, one last basket. And that will bring an end to the game. It looks like, will they give the timeout? They're gonna reset the clock here. They ruled timeout was called. With a few, with a couple seconds left, they put 7.15. I think it wants to put 1.5 up, or 0.7, and they're just getting it crossed. It's like, don't put the extra zero in there. Third try. Let's see what we get. The scoreboard at the top of your screen wired directly into the scoreboard. Whatever the scoreboard say here in the building is what you see on your screen. 53-48. And now they finally have it, 1.5. Set clock, 1.5, enter. I've run Dactronic scoreboards before. 1.5 seconds left. Only a miracle would save the Red Raiders. Perez, Zion Ayala doing jumping jacks in front of him, gets it in and gets the foul on Delikiai with seven tenths of a second left. Nine of 10 at the charity stripe in this second half from my count. And I think even the one miss turned into an offensive rebound for Lemonster. Delikiai, good on the first one. I've been saying all game, it just seems like every time something happens, that, that gap between the two teams always returns to six. Just feels like it'd be fitting to me if Delikiai missed this one. He doesn't. One more shot at the end, catches the rim. And that brings an end to this game. The Blue Devils sweep the doubleheader. They take this one 55 to 48. Ultimately a 19-18 fourth quarter. The highest scoring quarter by far tonight. But the Red Raiders couldn't get the stops they needed down the stretch. And Lemonster drawing plenty of contact. And it seemed like for a lot, we've seen so many missed free throws. But suddenly Lemonster in that second half just couldn't miss from the charity stripe. And once the rim stopped being unkind to them, they were getting and making shots with strong consistency. The Red Raiders just could not keep up. Nine points in the first four of the Red Raiders, nine in the second for 18, 12 in the third, 18 in the fourth for 30 in the second half for a total of 48. And for Lemonster, 11 in the first, 13 in the second for 24, 12 in the third, so they're averaging 12 a quarter. So you think 18 points is what you need to force a tie, but 
That's if you hold Leominster to 12 and they got 19, giving them that gap of seven points to win the game. 31 in the second for Leominster for a total of 55. And the Blue Devils are on to Oakmont to take on the Spartans in the Pod 6 Championship. They sweep the Red Raiders tonight at the Grutchfield Fieldhouse. And really, as it comes down to rivalry, rivalry Week Part 2, Leominster loves this. Fitchburg swept Rivalry Week Part 1. They won the hockey game, shutting out the Blue Devils. They won both basketball games in both boys and girls basketball. But now a last second win turned into a tie in hockey and, and two basketball games ending in Blue Devil victories. It is really hard to beat a team three times in one season. Leminster is proving that fact tonight. Final scores, Gabe Rivera finishes with 17, Jorge Gaetan with 10, Snoop Edmonds with six, Darnell Thomas with four, Montgomery Graham with seven, Nico Caputi with three, and Kenny Marte with one for the Red Raiders. And for Lemonster, Alex Moisen with three, Brian Perez with eight, Terrence McCormick two, Warren Asias nine, Isaac Tyson three, but Justin Dada and Nico Delicchi, I took over this game in the second half for the Blue Devils. They were on four points each at halftime, but Dada gets 10 points, six of them at the charity stripe in the second half, and Delicchi finishes with a team high 16, 12 points by himself. In the second half, really took over this game along with Dada. They combined to take the Red Raiders and knock them out. 55-48 again the final. Want to thank our wonderful crew here. Got us both games here from the field house. Matt Murdock and Travis Falk on camera and Nate Glennie back in the control room. All the pretty pictures that come to your screen, it takes just three people doing yeoman's work to make this tremendous broadcast come together. And then myself here to just try to put words to it all. Our underwriters who help make all of these remote productions possible, Workers Credit Union, Rollstone Bank and Trust, UMass Memorial Health Alliance, Clinton Hospital, North End Subaru, Research Results, Unitil, Minuteman Press, Hub International, Mart, Fitchburg State University, and the Sentinel and Enterprise. We thank them for all of their support to help making these remote productions possible. So it's going to be Lemonster and Quabbin in girls basketball in the Pod 6 final and Lemonster and Oakmont in the pod six final in boys basketball. And I believe Todd and Kate Robbins at Rivalry Family Media, who had this game tonight on their end, much happier, the Lemonster fans. Tonight, they'll be having those championship games as well on RFM. Look to their social media for more information on that. For us, we've got ice hockey tomorrow morning. The Red Raiders of Fitchburg Monty Tech will try to avenge the basketball teams and they'll take on the Lemonster Blue Devils. 9 a.m. puck drop. Get to bed because it's going to be an early morning for us. That's what I plan on doing when I get home. Got to get early sleep tonight. Otherwise, I'll be a zombie. Don't want that. But again, 9 a.m. for that. We hope you'll join us for that, and I think that'll be all here from the Grutchfield Fieldhouse. Lemonster sweeps the doubleheader in the pod six semifinals. They win in girls basketball, they win in boys basketball, and both sides on to the pod six finals. So for everyone here at FATV and Fitchburg High School, this is Daniel Bolak saying thank you for tuning in and joining us all season long, and we hope to see you next time. Until then, so long from Fitchburg.